If you've ever worked on improving your alternate picking speed through scale patterns, you've no doubt encountered the ever familiar dreadful feeling of having your pick stuck in between the strings. But thankfully, alternate picking master Troy Grady has literally cracked the code for us in his groundbreaking series here on YouTube, Cracking the Code, and shown us all how our favorite Shred Eye Knights are able to do what they do. And most of the time it's because those players are alternate picking Houdinis, virtual escape artists who can always find a way outside of the strings through their use of downwards escape picking and upwards escape picking. But how do we practice these two different picking trajectories that way we might become the next Shreddy Kruger? Like this. kids, it's your good buddy Uncle Ben and this magical little doohickey attached to the neck of my guitar that's currently holding my Apple iPhone is the magnet. If you've ever watched Troy's channel, you no doubt know what this thing is. It's this really awesome camera mount that goes on the neck of your guitar that you can use to look straight down the barrel at your picking and film yourself to learn more about the mechanics of your own playing than you've ever been able to do before. Troy gave me this one a few years ago whenever he was here in Knoxville, Tennessee, filming my good buddy Andy Wood for his channel, Mega Ultra Picker if you don't know Andy. And these aren't commercially available yet, but from what I understand, they will be very soon. So be sure to keep an eye on all of Troy Grady's social feeds and stuff like that. That way you can get one of these for yourself because trust me, you want one. But in the meantime, maybe you've got a willing participant in your household that can just hold your phone and film straight down the barrel while you work through some of the techniques that we're gonna talk about today. And as always, downloadable tabs, backing tracks, bonus lessons, and so much more are available to everybody who supports my channel over on my Patreon page, patreon.com slash benellerguitars. This week, everybody who supports my channel, even at just a $1 a month level, gets access to a ton of stuff that's going to help them become a pick slanting master. Namely, the practice tracks I'm going to upload of what you heard there in the intro at various speeds, as well as the MIDI tracks of those. That way you can upload them into your DAW and create your own backing tracks at whatever tempo you choose, as well as the Guitar Pro files. That way you can sling them right into Guitar Pro and practice along until your fingers bleed. Don't though. Stop like right before that. You don't want to hurt yourself. All that good stuff and more is waiting for you, so be sure to sign up to my Patreon page today by clicking the link in the video description. Thanks. I wrote the licks I'm going to show you guys today in a very deliberate way, that way you guys could practice both your upwards escape and downwards escape picking. And it's based around an Eric Johnson, Joe Bonamassa favorite, the B minor hexatonic scale, which is essentially like a B minor Pentecostal scale with the cool added second or ninth degree. And this is all going to be alternate picked, down, up, lather, rinse, repeat. There's no economy picking or anything like that in here. That's a lesson for another day. Let me show you the licks here first, and then I'll bust out the magnet and show you the technique that you need to make this thing work. Again, I just want to stress that this is all alternate pit, down, up, repeat. On the practice track that you got on the Patreon page, that's going to be played through four times in a row before you have a one beat rest and we play the second lick. Now the second lick is actually the exact same thing as the first lick, only instead of starting off here on the B, the first note, we're going to start off here on D, the second note. Otherwise everything is going to be completely the same. It's just being shifted over by one note. So we're going to start off here by walking up the scale from the second note. Still gonna do that turn around on the high E. Walking down. And you're still gonna have your little turn around here on the low E. Only this time it's gonna feel like a three note turn around and then you start over on that note, okay? So there at the end, 
that's the first note, and you start over from there, okay? So we have the first lick. And the second lick. Now, if you alternate pick that at any reasonably fast tempo, you're probably going to find out right away which camp you fall into. If the first version of the lick is easier, you're like me and an upwards escape kind of player. Because with all those string changes, they're happening after upstrokes. Down, up, down, up, down, up. Even your little turnaround on the high E, one, two, three, four, ends on an upstroke, and you're going to have an easy time of it. However, if the second version of the lick is easier for you, you're probably more of a downwards escape kind of player. Because right from the get-go, if you're starting off that first D note there with a downstroke, if your downstroke's going like this, you're going to be in good shape. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down. All your string changes are going to be happening after those downstrokes that are kind of going out and away from the face of the guitar. I find that there's a lot of players that play that way. I think especially guys that kind of cut their teeth playing metal, that get used to doing a lot of like fast consecutive downstrokes, they kind of get used to doing a downstroke that sort of goes away from the face of the guitar like that. So if you have experience playing in that genre, you might be a downwards escape player already. And if you find both versions of the lick to be really hard to play, you might be one of those players that has no sort of slant to your picking at all meaning that your pick strokes are always going to be caught in between the strings, leading you to kind of hop and hurdle over them as you get through the lick. And we want to change that. Now let's put this magnet guy to use here so you guys can see the ins and outs, literally, of what's going on with these picking styles. Okay, so what you're seeing right there is my natural picking style, upstroke escape. Again, you can see how my downstrokes here kind of go into the strings, and my upstrokes kind of fly away from the strings like that. That's just how I've always played. I don't really honestly know where that came from, just what kind of felt natural to me. So that means whenever I play the first version of the lick, it's a piece of cake. All the string changes happen whenever my pick is out here in the air. Again, just to give you a good visual comparison here, this is what I would think of as very neutral picking. The pick is literally going down and up. And you can see on either side here, I'm stuck in between two strings. Now, if I was never changing strings or playing a one-stringed instrument, that'd be fine. But that means that any time I go to change strings, I got a hurdle in either direction. There's just no good way to do that fast. However, if I just take that kind of handshake motion that neutral picking offers and slightly tilt it on its side so that the upstrokes are popping out and away from the face of the guitar, I'm always offered an escape option that helps me change strings more better. However, if you try to play the second lick that we talked about with that same picking technique, you're going to have a bad time. Check it out. So the second version of the lick starts off with that single note on the low E as a downstroke. For me, that means I'm screwed because I'm already in between two strings here. So if I want to do an upstroke on the next note, you can see how the pick has to kind of hurdle over it to go up, down, hurdle, up, down, hurdle, up, down. And yeah, I know it's like you could economy pick your way through this, but that's not what this lesson's about. Anyway. Considering that all the string changes in the second version of the lick happen after downstrokes, this is a lick that's much better suited for that downwards escape kind of picking. Now the same way that my upwards escape picking kind of went in and out at this sort of angle, I'm going to kind of exaggerate for camera here, the downwards escape picking is going to be the opposite. It's going to go up and in, down and out, okay? It's more like this angle. Check it out. See how those downstrokes are going out and away? So that right there is really favorable for that kind of lick considering that it's always changing strings after those downstrokes. 
If my downstrokes are away from the strings, they can get to the next string really easily. You'll probably notice that my angles are much like straighter and harder for my upward escape picking. That's just because that's the technique that I have played with forever, and this downwards escape kind of picking is still kind of new to me. So the angles there aren't quite as like steep and sharp as they are when I'm doing my upwards escape picking. But again, work in progress. So as you practice this along with those backing tracks, what I want you to do is to play the first lick with a very strong upwards escape picking. Go for a big, dumb diagonal angle as you play this stuff. Don't try to make it any kind of small thing. Make it big. You ever watch Zach Wild play? He's a, um, an upwards escape player too, and his angles are gigantic. That guy looks like he's hitting every string all the time, when in reality his upstroke is just flying away from the face of the guitar like crazy. So as you're practicing this with this upwards escape kind of angle, throw it out wide. You'll notice also that I'm using the next string as kind of like a, a stopping block for the pick. See that right there? I hit the A string, but I kind of rested on the D string. That's ensuring that my downstroke isn't, you know, coming away from the face of the guitar. So if you're not conscious of that, you can end up practicing like this, which is an entirely different mechanic and not really what we're talking about today. So again, make these angles steep and big. Use that next string as your uh, stopping block. We're gonna go through this four times. Then during that one beat rest, we're gonna switch styles here and go to that downwards escape picking. Now again, like the super mega elite players like Aldi Miola and Andy Wood and cats like that, they do this so seamlessly that you really can't even see them switch styles. I'm making this big and obvious because I'm still working on it and also just to make it very visible for the camera's sake, okay? So we're gonna flip around here to this more sort of downwards escape picking where picking is gonna be following that trajectory. Now you'll notice that whenever I was doing my upwards escape picking, I kind of have that little knob at the base of my little finger kind of resting against the bridge and the strings of the guitar. Now whenever I go to the upwards escape, I'm gonna kind of roll the hand a little bit so that I'm sort of more on the base of the thumb. For me, that's a really great way to kind of get used to switching those two picking styles. Again, there's a lot of players that can do this and barely even do any perceptible change, like Andy. But for myself, I'm trying to make these big, obvious movements. That way I can refine them later. The best way to think about this stuff when we're talking about making these big, dumb motions is a way that one of my students that I was talking to years ago described it. He described it as being like your first day in karate class, right? Somebody throws a punch at your head and you jump five feet out of the way. That way you don't get hit, right? But then the more that you learn and the more that you learn how to control yourself and stuff, you learn that, well, I could actually just dodge over six inches, or I could actually just dodge over an inch, or I could just move my head by a millimeter and that punch won't hit me. But make it big at first, that way you can learn the value of the motion. Here's how that downwards escape picking will look on the second lick. Again, it's the total opposite of your upwards escape picking. The downstrokes are going away, the upstrokes are going in. And again, as I'm practicing this, you'll notice that I'm using the next lower string as kind of like a stopping block for my upstrokes. That way I can learn the value of making this sort of diagonal motion and burying my upstroke in the strings and making the downstroke pop out and away from the face of the guitar. Check this out. Here's one really important thing you gotta understand about this stuff. When I do this downstroke escape, it's not just a way of getting me out of the strings. It plays a note, but it's also like an elevator that takes me to the next string. You see how that downstroke there is going past the A? I'm like under the A string now, right? If you do a little teeny tiny motion like this, you're kind of defeating the purpose of all this stuff. It's a pick stroke that plays a note that also acts as an elevator to get you to the next string. Check it out. 
this downstroke's not gonna be teeny tiny. It's gonna get me out and under the next string every time. It's a way of playing a note. It's also a transportation method. Upstroke escape is the exact same way. Check it out. When I'm on the way down from the lick right there, you can really see how these upstrokes are putting me above the next string. Again, they're not small. It's not like this. It's really flipping me out above the A string, or above the E string in this case. That way I can come right down on it and hit it. Let's play through those licks together here at 100 BPM. That way you guys can practice both picking strokes right along with me. One, two, three, four. As you learn to trust these motions and understand how they're helping you get in and out of the strings and get from string to string, you can start refining these motions more and more. Here's what I mean. Now you can see right there that my upstroke is so big and dumb, it's actually got lift above the low E string. I'm above the low E right now. I'm playing the D string right now, but my upstroke is so big and dumb that it's flying up and away over all these strings. Now again, that's helped me learn how to trust this motion because it's not like I'm gonna crash through other strings. There's no way that can happen if I'm traveling in and out like this, right? As I learned to trust that motion, I learned that I could start refining this and making it steeper, right? Now this right here is a much steeper angle than what I did earlier, right? You can see that right away. I've still got the lift happening. I can get above the low E with that if I want to and not risk hitting any of those other strings because I'm still coming out at an angle. Again, learn to trust the mechanic. Same goes with my downstroke escape stuff here. Now again, this is a very not steep, very big dumb downstroke I'm making right here. You can see it's getting out under the B but there's no fear of me hitting the other strings or anything like that because of the way it's popping out, right? As I learn to trust this downstroke escape thing more, I can start refining that and making it a steeper angle. Again, I don't have to jump across the room to not get hit. I can just move my head barely an inch and that's enough. I'd say that's about as steep of an angle as I'm comfortable making right now with my downstrokes. Again, I'm going past the G, I'm not hitting it. But it's still probably not as steep as my upwards escape stuff, just because I'm more comfortable with that. Start big and dumb with the angles. Work on making them steeper and straighter as you go. And then of course, there's a subject of blending both of those two together. That way you're not just doing one style or the other, but rather seamlessly blending in between the two. That's what the real picking masters like Al Di Miola can do effortlessly. But honestly, don't worry about that until you get totally comfortable with both fighting styles, right? So licks like this are really great to help you get used to practicing with that upwards escape and downwards escape before we start trying to blend them together into an all-encompassing picking system. So there you go guys, the keys to the alternate pickin castle. I've got like a million other licks that I could suggest working on to improve both styles of escape, but I think getting started on that right there will really help you get this under your fingers and get some benefits out of it right away. Be sure to head on over to patreon.com slash Ben Eller Guitars and grab all those practice files. 
Again, I've uploaded the licks at multiple different tempos. You got the MIDI files. You can build your own and put it at whatever tempo you want to. You got the guitar profile. You got everything that you need to become a pick slanting master. And all it's gonna, and all it's gonna cost you is a buck. And all it's gonna cost you is a buck. Or more if you wanna buy some God damn it. And all it's gonna cost you is a buck. Or more if you feel like buying some treats for a new dog turkey. It's turkey time. Thanks so much for liking this video and subscribing to my channel. Be sure to ring the bell for notifications every time I upload a new slice of fried gold. It's been fun as always, but now it's time to get away from the computer and put in some work on the old guitar. Less clicking, more picking.